Hello and welcome back. It's puzzle time with Sudoku Sleuth, and today we're playing Morse code. And you can see here Sleuth, I guess, listening to an old school radio, um, writing down, I guess, the Morse code as it comes in and spending some time translating it with a pencil and paper. Very old school way of doing it, but I guess, you know, if you've seen consistently from all the pictures around Sleuth, they all seem to be, you know, from probably a few decades ago. So, you know, that kind of spy craft around that time, yeah, probably realistic. Well, let's take a look at the puzzle. Hopefully it's not going to be so cryptic that we stand no chance of solving it. So today we're looking at Morse code by Xenos. And, like, there's a little bit of lore when Xenos posted this. And it's about basically using, essentially, like, these wires to transmit messages through it using Morse code. So in a way, like you can almost imagine these are like the airways that we're sending this through or the wires, you know, like a telegraph. And then all of these, I guess, dots, stop, starts, you know, is it a long one? Is it a short one? And they're somehow making their way through there into this end. I guess that's kind of meant to be the picture that's being shown here. If you squint really hard and look, maybe that you'll see it. Well, enough of that. Rule sets. So, normal Sudoku rules apply. So, all of the regular viewers of this channel, I imagine you know exactly what that means. Digits 1 to 9 in every row, in every column, including the cell, and in every 3x3 three three box. No repeats in any of these. We have killer cages. So, there's only one killer cage. I think Xenos actually correctly used the singular form of this, killer cage. Digits in a cage cannot repeat and must sum to the value in the corner. So we've got two cells in here that are highlighted with this dashed line, and all that's saying is that these two cells have to sum up to five. We have white dots. Digits separated by a white dot are consecutive, and all white dots are given. So you have negative constraints today. Let's pick these white dots. As an example, that means if this was a 2, this cell would have to be, because it's connected by a white dot to this 2, consecutive with the 2, that could be 1, as in 1 plus 1 is 2, or it could be a 3, as in 2 plus 1 is 3. Now, what is also interesting is that today, at least, negative constraints apply. So, if I place a 2 in here, I can't place a 3 nor a 1 in there, that would actually break the puzzle. It can only be from 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. I mean, still plenty of options, but it removes a few digits. What else do we have? Palindromes. So digits along a line form a palindrome, i.e. it reads the same forwards and backwards. I'm going to pick this line here as an example. So if imagine this was 3, 4, and 5. This has to read the same forwards and backwards. So this will have to be 3, 4, and 5. So it becomes 3, 4, 5, 4, 3. Well, that's all the rules we have for today. If you fancy decoding the message that is um, stowed away secretly into this grid, link will be in the description down below as usual for you to play along. And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. So looking at this, it feels like there's a lot of places to start. I mean, particularly this palindrome that's like going everywhere in its length. Very tempting, but at the same time, looking at box three, just the sheer number of white crop dots and the cage makes this interesting. In particular, this cell. So whatever this cell is, it needs to have two neighbors. So if I, for example, I make this a one, both of these would have to be a two and then I've broken it. Now, I even think I can't make this a 2, because that would require 1 and 3. But I still need to place a 3 in here to make this cage add up to 5. So I think... I think this is gonna... this has to be a 4, but let me just quickly test 3. Yeah, same problem, because the 2 is in here, and then I can't place 2 and 4 in there. Same challenge. So this is actually forced. This is a 4, this is a 1. The 1 gives me the 2 in here, the 4 needs to be surrounded by a 3 and a 5. Now notice the 3 can't be next to the 2, negative constraints do apply, so that's the 5, that's the 3, 
I mean, another way of seeing this would have been that if I went to four, this would be a three, and then what would this digit be? So it's still resolvable without the negative constraint. Three, five, six, and then we have in here seven, eight, nine. Um, something about white Kropke dots or, you know, white dots in this particular puzzle, they're always going to be composed of an odd cell and an even cell. Otherwise, how are they going to be consecutive? If they're both even, they're not joined. If they're both odd, they're still not joined. From 7, 8, and 9, the 8 is the one that needs to be in there. That's not an 8. This is a palindrome, so this cell is the same. And this is now a 6 or 8. Again, odd. This is even. Um, we'll take a look at that in a second. The 3, I'm pretty sure we can place. That's a 2 because the 4 is placed. And this is 1 or 3, again on the palindrome. So, you know, I said I'll take a look at it in a second. I think it's time to look at it. Um, I may use colors. I mean, if nothing else, just like to make sure I don't accidentally put pencil marks in the wrong place. So what I'm do doing is essentially just highlighting the cells that have to be the same. So these two purples are the same because remember the palindrome has to read the same forwards and backwards. And then the six, eight is in here which actually now is because this is seven, eight, nine, all seeing this cell, this has to be six. Six has to be connected to the seven. Nine is too far away. That's a seven. This is eight or nine. I'll come back to that again. Um, this six now, well, there's a one, three in here now. You know, every time I say I'll come back to it, I'm pretty much immediately come back to it. So eight, nine, that's nine, that's eight. That can't be seven, so I have to go back up to nine. That's eight, that's nine, that goes back down to eight. So this is, essentially, these two are the same no matter what. We now have another eight, nine in this column, which can only be down here, because it can't be on, the, on this Kropke dot. Essentially, what would I pair it with? If it's a nine, well, the eight is up here. If it's an eight, well, the nine is up here as well as the seven. So the second eight, nine in this column has to be here. This is now from one, two or three with a two for sure in there to make sure that it joins and then this one, three. So this is one, two, three. That's not a two because I've already placed it. That's not a two. That's the two. That's the two. This is one or three again. We're going to keep repeating this one threes, it seems. And have we run out of steam? Almost. Anything else that's obvious? Not yet. Um, two, a bit of Sudoku means that there is a two in here. The two is once again going with a one three. So we now have a triplet of this with one, two, three. In here, we have four, five with an eight, nine, the second eight, nine, that's not this cell. Again, the eight, nine can't join it, can't join the four or the five in here. So that's eight, nine, that's four, five. The eight, nine, we've kind of got the same logic going on here. If that's nine, that's eight. If that's eight, although technically it could be seven or nine, I've already placed the seven. So that's an eight, nine. We can finish this up now with one, two, we need three and six making yellow one, one, orange is now three. These are not three, this is a one, two pair. I meant to delete that. Um, that's eight nines, we know what these are. This is four, five, and seven. This is four, five, or seven. Is it this white dot now that's kind of meant to be the next step? Seems like there are tons of options. So I'm not sure about that. If this is four, this could be three or five. Although admittedly, we'll struggle to break that. If that's four, five, that's five. Four. Well, actually, no, that's on a palindrome. So we'd have this cell to break it. So that's actually entirely plausible, even if um, not plausible, possible, even if you assume uniqueness for this puzzle. This can't be a three though. It's next to the two, no white dot between them. So the negative constraints do apply. 
That's not a three. Oh, come on. Sleuth. Don't read the rules and ignore it. That's not a five. That's a four. That's a five. That can't be a two. Next to a three. That's a one. That's a two. Um, I don't know what that is. Well, anyway, that five is gone. That four is gone. This is five or seven. If it's a five, can I actually use the negative constraints anywhere else? Just, yeah, that's not three. That's six. That's three. I think that's, for now at least, run out of steam in here. That can't be an 8 next to the 7. That's 9. That's 8. That's 9. That's 8. That's 9. That's 8. That's not 7. All right. It does look like we've run out of steam now. So back to this. This is 5 or 7. If this is a 5, I don't see a problem with having a 4 in here. It can also be... Presumably a six. Actually, let me just, I think, which ones can I remove? I can remove all of these colors because we're done with these. Let's start a new set. So whatever this is, it's in here and it can't be six. So that's four, presumably, or eight if it's a seven. So that's four or eight by the looks of things. Can't be a four on because of this white dot. It needs a neighbor, and both the three and five are gone. So that's eight, that's eight, that's forcing this to be a seven, that's a seven, that's not seven. Um, I'll think about that in a moment. You know how I always say I'll think about that in a moment and then immediately sort of come back to it? I sort of see something very similar in, a, in my future in a moment. That's not 7 or 9, that's a 5, that's not a 5. Why did I just do that? Ignore everything that I just did here. I forgot that there's actually 4 cells, not 3 cells. So this is 4, 5, 7 or 9. That's not 7 or 9, that's 4 or 5. That is clearly not 4 or 5, that's connected to the 8. That's 7 or 9. Then we have 4, 5, 7 or 9. This can't be 4, 5, 7, or 9. This is certainly not a 7. Not a 4 either. So that's restricted to 5, 9. 7 and 4, you know, already placed in the row. So we know they're not 7 or 9. Sorry, 4 or 7, it's 5 or 9. Can I do more with this? Probably. That's not 4. That's a triplet now of 5, 7, 9, therefore that's a 4. This is 3 or 5. Both are which are, are still available. In fact, this is 2, 3, 5. And clearly the 2 and 3 are connected. That can't be the 5. That's the 5. This is another 2, 3. As you can see, it's the palindrome, except this 2 gives me the order. That's 3, that's 3, that's 2. Um, this can't be 7 or 9. Again, negative constraint. No white dot. So 5, 9, 7. This is not a 4. It's already placed. That's 6. And then to finish in here, we've got 8 and 9. And then to finish in here, we need 1, 4, and... Sorry, not 9. 7. And here is the 9. That looks better. That's not one, that's not four, just negative constraints, just working through them. That's not four either. So four can't be next to the three or the five. That's the four. The seven or eight, not necessarily resolved. It sort of depends on what is the one and nine. Although nine, that's a nine. I think we are done with all of these. So I'm going to reuse some colors again. So that's... Blue, green, yellow, orange. And we'll take a look in a moment. And I'm sure I'll bounce back immediately saying, well, I don't have any other ideas. Let me take a look now. Um, but let's, before we do that, let's just think about what this is. So to complete this, we need one, four, and six, I'm going to say. So 1, 4, 6. Can't have a 4 in here. Again, negative constraint. Can't have a 1 in there. 
one in the column can't have a six in here so not exactly helpful um, okay maybe time to do some palindrome wizardry such as what is purple it's not one two three four five it can be six can also be seven it's not eight and it's not nine so yeah maybe we can do some palindrome wizardry if that's a six that would be five or seven not five it would be seven if that's seven that could be six but not eight so that's a six seven pair incredibly and then we have another one three in one of these two cells with a nine so this is one three or nine with a definite nine that's not a three do i have anything that can help me resolve this at this point it doesn't look like it does it no this white croquet dot maybe i mean there's so many options still left in the column it's one four six seven eight nine now one and four are not adjacent six and seven doesn't work because i've already used one of them so i mean i think it is forced to be eight nine a second six seven in here a second one four essentially no 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 sleuth just pay attention six looking at this that's a seven that's resolved that's a six Right, what's actually left? One, four, five, eight, and nine. So I can technically have four and five in here. That four tells me it's four with a five, and then a one. That all looks good to me. The other option is eight, nine, with eight being in here, nine being in there. And unfortunately, that also still works because, you know, none of these digits are adjacent to anything that's next to it so for the moment that looks like it works and then i have in here can i eliminate anything one not really what i can eliminate is four because four is not in these two cells which are repeated so one of these is four and therefore that's a six if that's a six that's a one that's a four that's not four or five anymore that's nine eight this is one and five one and five and i guess this can't be the one because we've got two in the column so that's five one one five neither of these are one anymore so that's nine that's three that's one do we know anything else such as what's yellow let's have a think about this actually just easier stuff first four not four what's in here five and three right three three five and in here i need four eight two four eight not two not eight not eight in here either because it's next to the seven that's the eight that can't be a two next to the one that's a four that's a two that's a four that can't be a five next to, well with the five already placed that's a three i mean i've already placed the three ages ago i don't know why i ignored that five looking at this four five nine repeat in this palindrome which gives me the one the nine seven eight not resolved I can just do I can just place these digits. I need well there's a six down here, six, seven, and two. And I say that's the two, that's the six, seven, because they're the only ones that are consecutive. That's the two. These are eight, which is in here, and four, which is in there. Eight gives me the seven and eight, which in turn gives me the six and seven this is six or four i've already placed the four in the box come on sleuth two and then if i've not made any other mistakes that's a five in the solution to today's puzzle 
That's a lovely puzzle, Xenos. I'm glad this Morse code was very easy to decode. Lots of obvious steps. I mean, lovely break-in with the five constraint and the crop key dots. And the negative constraint, I think it helped a lot. I don't know if there is anywhere in the puzzle where it was necessary. Probably had to sort of almost like replay it and see if it's indeed necessary. I'm sure that you didn't add it without reason, but it just constantly kept eliminating options all the way through the puzzle and uh, made it very approachable. <laughs> Thank you for the puzzle, Xenos. Hope you guys enjoyed it and hope you enjoyed the video and see you back for the next one. Bye for now.